David Sutz up here with Terry Bowden at Mac Media Day in Detroit. Coach, this is the fourth time you're here. What do you look forward to the most each time you come here to Detroit? Well, you know, it's fun to see our players and what they say and how they act. Each year you got a different one of your leaders. You bring them up here, you give them this media day where they get asked questions and you watch how they perform and how they act. And buddy, Jatavis Brown and, and, and Cody Grice have done a great job of representing our players, our school, our community. I've been very impressed. I just I always enjoy watching the players, our team and other team, watching the players and see how they interact with the press. You're about to embark on your fourth season leading this program. How has this team changed from the time that you took over to now, not just in terms of the attitude, but also in terms of the players? You know, they've got our, our kids, have just, we've gotten better and better. I think the players, I, I've, I've, I've been in love with this bunch since we've had them. We've had a lot of guys grow with us. We've added talent level. Uh, I just, I'm just appreciative of how much they continue to believe in what we're doing, believe in, in the program they're going to build, and they don't, and they, and they don't question or doubt that they're going to be a championship team. That they're going to go out there and get this team of the championship and play for a bowl. They don't doubt that that's a part of their future, and that's the kind of confidence uh, and the kind of can-do attitude that you like to see. And I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. And each year, it's gotten better and better. You mentioned that each year it's getting better and better in terms of the competition right. and the talent. One big question mark for your team throughout the offseason has been who's going to play quarterback? Right. Kyle Paul and Trayvon Chapman. We've been asked millions of questions yes. about this. How has the competition at that position really impacted the rest of the team? Well, I, I, it, I think it will when you pick, a, pick one of the two starters. They have different styles of play. That may affect how we do certain things. I don't think it'll affect uh, whether this guy plays hard or that guy plays hard or he believes or he doesn't believe. I just think they have a little different talents, they're little different things they do well, and we'll kind of blend ourselves into what they do. There may be both of them. Both of these guys may play. We're not locked into one guy. And so I just like the fact there's competition. Nothing creates better uh, football players than competition, and we're starting to get competition at each position. Switching to the defensive side of the ball, two of your stars are here in Cody Grice and Jatavis Brown. You also have a couple of transfers that are eligible to play this season, Jamal Marcus and Rodney Poe, right. among others. What stands out to you about the talent on that side of the ball? Well, the, the thing that hurt us the most in spring is our front seven. The athleticism of our uh, front four and the linebacking speed of our linebackers. I mean, Dylan Evans has been a three-year guy that's been around here. Uh, Jatavis is unbelievably plays well all the time. Uh, we've had a, a Daryl Monroe transfer from Washington State uh, right now as a three-year starter at Washington State and uh, gives us an inside linebacker with a lot of experience there. So I, I think the front seven is probably the, 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 the group that dominated the most in the spring. And really, I think that's where you build your football team around here. You guys were picked to tie for second in the Mac East Division in the preseason poll. How do you think your squad stacks up with the rest of the conference? Well, you know, you know, we're not favorites. We're not the team that, that's supposed to win. We haven't earned those things yet. We haven't beaten teams that have been winning it. But I think we are clearly competitive with everybody in the conference. I don't think anybody comes to Akron like they did come and say, here's an easy win. I think we, we have gotten ourselves to that position. Now we have to start winning games, the close games, winning games that we've lost close. And I think that's where we are right now. We are at that point. And I think, I think we are a factor in this conference. What we have to do is now get over to the point where we're now the factor in the conference or the division champs or play for the game. But I think the great thing about our, our players, they've got Akron in a position to where every week we go out there and have a chance to win in this conference. You mentioned winning those close games to get over the right. hump. What else do you guys have to do to get over that hump and become bowl eligible and also compete for a match championship? Well, I mean, that, the, the winning, the, the things that are involved with winning close ball games, every year we just get a little more talented. We, we've, we've improved the quality of our roster, the talent level from the first team to the third team. That's what's improved. And I think uh, as you talk about winning, I, I don't think I can outcoach anybody in this conference. There's too many good coaches. I do the best I can, hope I can break even once in a while in the coaching department. We've got to have players that can line up and physically whip other players, that can physically be more talented uh, so that we go out there and don't have to do something uh, unique or do something out of our ordinary to win a football game. And I think that's what we have to do is continue to get that kind of talent increase, that kind of increase the talent level at Akron. You guys start training camp on August 8th. What are you guys looking to do before that start date? 
Well, we've got about, I'm sure the players are going to continue to train the rest of this week. I'd like them to get away, to mentally get away for three or four days, to get just to relax, get their minds off of it, see their families, uh, kiss their girlfriends goodbye, and get ready for two days and, uh, and preseason because once we come back, it's all business, uh, it's all focus, and, and uh, we find out how badly they want to turn this program into a championship team. Answer the bell. That's the motto for this season. Right. How did you guys decide on that slogan? Well, I just love the thought of when you get knocked down, the, the heavyweight fighter that gets knocked down and, and jumps up and answers the bell. The, the bell rings. He knows he's got to go out there. Some Two people exhausted in the 15th round, and somebody's got to answer the bell and win. Last year at the halfway point, we were 4-2. and two. Uh, we had a chance to, to be a conference leading contender. Uh, we lose a quarterback, we didn't rally, we got knocked down, we didn't get up. We got knocked down and we didn't get up. Well, it's time to answer the bell. Our players know it's time to answer the bell. This year, we expect our players to answer that bell. Well, you guys seem more than ready for the start of camp on August 8th. Thanks for the time, Coach, and we look forward to talking with you more during training. Thank you very much.